What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we're here with Alex again. We got his Triumph 660 back in the garage. So we're going to be doing some more work on it today. We're going to be doing the DNA air filter. We're going to be doing a flash and tune, correct? Yep. And what else? Um, that should be about it. Honestly. That's about it. Yep. So with the brakes, um, last time we did um, the, the pads, we bled the fluid. Uh, we put the uh, Motul RBF 600 in there. Um, how did you feel with the front and rear after that change? I mean, no doubt in my mind, the the it was a dramatic change, at least in the brake feel more than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, I think stopping power um, was a less of a marked difference between the center pads. Again, I haven't tried anything sort of extreme mm -hmm. with the, the brakes, so I can't really say mm -hmm. with 100% certainty. Sure. Um, but... I mean, brake feel alone, I think changing the fluid made such a huge change. Yeah. Um, I think that, I mean, I know that I hadn't bled the brakes in the 3,000 miles before we did that. Mm -hmm. I think that was a really positive change for the bike. Um, it has made me a lot more confident riding around town. Um, and I'm re really, like, leaning heavier on that front brake. I think I was putting a little bit too much on the rear before. Okay. Um, That's good. But it's, it's fabulous. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can feel it right now, I think we could use just like another bleed. So like after time, once you're, you, you know, after you did a, you know, fresh flush, you have new fluid in there, some bubbles will work their way down. So it doesn't hurt to maybe do like another one, but. Um, yeah, it's been about 500 miles. So yeah, maybe yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, so I mean, that's just like a recommendation I would make, but I mean, they feel good. And if you're getting, you know, a stronger bite, I mean, um, like I said, we went with the street level pads. We didn't go with a track level pad, you know, so. Um, oh, another thing that I'll, I'll mention, uh, just before I forget, is that uh, I think I mentioned in the previous video that I was experiencing a little bit of squeal mm -hmm. with the uh, original pads. That mm -hmm. has entirely gone away. Great. There is no squeal whatsoever. I don't know if that was just because, I mean, the pads had plenty of, of life left in them. Mm -hmm. I just think that the quality of the pads that maybe came stock from Trident, or sorry, sure. from Triumph, were not necessarily the highest quality. Sure. Okay. Well... I'm stoked to uh, you know get this thing tuned up and get her you know breathing with the breathing some more with the intake and uh, um, stay tuned for the video guys. All right. We're gonna be doing the air filter first, um, and Alex is gonna briefly go over what the process will look like for. Um, the Trident 660. So what what do we get to do? So first, of course, just pop off your seats. Yep. Throw they don't over here. Okay. Um, we're gonna have to disconnect the battery okay. in order to get access to some pins to remove these plates first. Okay. So the battery removal, just a little rubberized clip here. Got pop it. that off very easily. Then these will come out. There's a couple of screws and then some plastic grommets. Then we'll release some screws that are around the bottom of the tank. And of course, there's this little bib up here around the key. It'll be hard to see at the moment, but um, that'll be the, the last component until we sort of just put the, the uh, tank to the side and replace that air filter. Great, so just like a lot of other support bikes, I'm assuming it's just right under the gas tank. Pretty much. A little bit harder to get to, so. All right, cool. Just, so uh, first thing we're gonna do is release the battery. And strap this guy. Yeah, so very, Easy little rubber strap there. Okay. Then we're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver gotcha. to go ahead and disconnect the battery. I'm gonna be... Rotate up and out. Yep. There you go. Okay. Up and out for that battery. And don't put your batteries on the floor. They will drain. Always raise them off of concrete. <laughs> okay, so now we've gotta get access to two little uh, metal screws that are just, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but there's one here where my index finger is. There's some a uh, couple of cables right there okay, yeah. that are hard to get to. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit easier on the opposite side. You're just gonna need a, an Allen for this one, I think. That looks like a five. It's either a five or a six, but we'll try both. Survey says six. It's a five. Woo! There we go. So we're getting these two five millimeter bolts out. And these are just to release these plastic panels. Okay, okay, so that bolt is... This one's harder to get, this is harder to access. All right, so it's uh, just above the uh, wiring harness, but it's on the same position on the other side, yep. so. 
Now these are not very tight because remember they're just screwed into plastic, right? Uh -huh. So we're not going to torque these down later or anything like that. They just have to be enough resistance that it's not easy to take them off. At this point they're already hand tight for me so I'm going to finish the rest by hand. Cool. Feel the uh, plastic loose. There's a washer under there too so hang on to that. But this is all we're talking about. Great. Okay. Now is that holding the side fairing in as well? Or just this this plastic part. That's really the only thing this is connected to. And here as well. Yeah, we're gonna need to get that guy loose as well. So we'll get started on those. Now those are screwing into it's like a met is that a nut or yeah. Okay. But I'm able to hold it with my hand. Got it. And get that loose. Cool. Don't want to lose this nuts down into the depths. Of... Oh my gosh. I've done that on my R1 and I panic until I find it. <laughs> so I'm just going to re put this nut back on there. Okay. okay. So now that we've taken those two bolts off. Well, take out your key. <laughs> That'd be a good thing. Um, Probably a good thing. They're now just two plastic grommets holding this on. Okay. And all it takes now the right is just some steady force to pop those out. Okay. Does that slide forward or back? Nope, just pop straight up. There we go. Okay, so here we go. The things that I just popped out were first this back portion. So remember it pops on like this, right? Yep. So we've got this this plastic grommet. Mm hmm And then we've got a little clip right here. Okay. So plastic clip, plastic grommet. Uh, when we pop it back on, it'll just sort of hinge back on again. Great. Okay. Just easy and pop, pop the rear off first, right? Yep. Just straight out. Just uh, grab the bottom as well. Bring it straight out. There you go. Uh, and the clip, one same in, thing. One in the front. Okay, cool. All right, so what are we doing? We're popping off the front um, little cowling around yep. the gas tank? Exactly. Okay. And for this, we're just going to lift straight up. There's uh, two little grommets underneath it. All right. We're just pop right off. Oh, nice. Comes right off. Again, two little clips. Right okay. here, one on each side. Sweet. These clip into the, the tank itself. Great. Okay. Now it looks like um, three five millimeters from yeah. the back of the tank and the two sides. So let's get those guys. So the two fronts uh, for the the gas tank are right there, five millimeters. And to be clear, these are not like torqued down. These are these are very lightly on there. All all of five of these bolts have been very easy to to release. I feel like it's been this way with the whole bike. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. I mean that that was like that? not tight at all. Like it was tight, but it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of force holding that down. I feel like. And again, a very short bolt. I feel like you could use some Loctite on those when you put them back on. Just not crank them, you know? Right, right, right. Probably couldn't hurt. Just for a peace of mind. So what are we working on? All right. oh, the, bolts okay. are, the, the bolts are still, bolts still on. Yeah. Alright, just pulling these off real quick. And these guys. So you're taking the right side off. The Back side off the tank. Yep. Um, and then we're gonna have to disconnect the fuel valve and the fuel pump. That one right there. Yep. All right. So importantly, uh, of the left, right, and rear, uh -huh. um, the left and right are shorter. The rear is longer. Okay. Just something to be aware of. Good to know. Yeah. All right. So we just released the uh, the tank cover. Yep. And the tank cover actually. It's an actual cover, so it's not an actual gas tank all in itself. Um, if you can see when this pops up, it's actually the um, gas what, fuel opening hole, um, you know, stays with it. So this is just a cover. There you go. Something's holding it down. Oh, it's right over here. So there's, some, there's some wires on the left side of the bike, so. Those are good. There we go. So we a little bit. There we go. Coming right off. You good? There we are. All right. Covers off. Cool. Yeah. So 
like I said, that was a cover, and then here's your actual gas tank. <laughs> Different than the Japanese bikes, that's for sure. All right, so let's start, I believe this is, is this a 10 on that side? On okay. the right side of the? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna get you an eight. So here, just hold that, hold it. Now I'll just go, I'll just do it from this side. It's losing, I don't know if we need to take it all out. Cool. Yep. So now for the cabling, um, what we noticed is that these can actually slide off instead of disconnecting them. And that goes for both sides. So instead of actually disconnecting the electrical, they just slide off of the uh, brackets. Yeah, and, and that's true for both sides. True for the, yeah. There's um, one on the right and looks like two on the left. Mm -hmm. All right, so we um, are about to remove the gas tank. We already loosened up the um, bolt in the rear of the tank, which would allow it to swivel. And this... Um, so we've got, uh, we've got two bolts holding the tank down here in the front. There's one here on the right, one of course on the opposite side on the left. Mm -hmm, in, or in order to access that bolt, we need to remove this portion. Yeah. In order to do that, we've got three five millimeter uh, Allen bolts here, just behind this electrical box, one here at the front, and then there's one directly underneath. So we're gonna have to remove this, yep. and then... So, so a little plastic rivet here. Um, it's kind of annoying just to get to this little eight millimeter that's holding on the gas tank, but is what it is. Um, but these, uh, these smaller things holding the electrical box on, these are uh, T20 Torx bolts. Yeah. So you're gonna need that uh, a, a torque, a Torx Allen, okay. instead of a hex Allen. that all right we'll let that hang off right there while we get access to this eight millimeter bolt right here so just want to zoom in on that um, eight millimeter right there that's what's holding the front um, on both sides of the gas tank feels feels hand tight now yeah it is there we go and that is your bolt right there so that is the last eight right here on the left side of the gas tank and then we should be able to pop it off wow, so, 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 sorry about the angle but it's really tight in there <laughs> get two fingers on it now there it is it's out that's it it's out again very loose so uh we just discovered that even though it does hinge if we wanted to that it's probably best to go ahead and just take it all the way off because it's getting caught on the ignition. We'll take this long ass bolt out. Give me a hand. You just can't help yourself, can you? There we go. Um, disconnecting fuel lines can spit some fuel out, so definitely have a rag handy um, and a flathead, and um, you'll be able to disconnect your line. This is your breather for the fuel. You just pop this off right there. Now your, so you have two plugs for your fuel pump. One is brown, so we're gonna disconnect that. Then there's a, looks like a black one on the other end as well, so we're gonna disconnect that one too. So just take a flathead, sorry, just pop this down a little bit. It's kind of like a U bracket, and you should be able to uh, slide it off. There we go. We're loose? Yep. Taking it away. All right. Is there anything else connecting? Are we, we're all, yep, we're yep. All so there's a breather oh, on the right. On. Yep. One more breather. And then we're gonna pop her somewhere safe. All right, so this is what the Trident Triumph looks like with the gas tank taken off. So we're gonna remove um, these two bolts from each side as this is the air box and interestingly enough it actually pulls air from the side of the bike instead of you know from normal um, or at least from, from what I've seen from the front um, the intakes actually coming in from the side so we'll get this bracket off this top piece will pop off and then we're gonna just 
swap out the uh, filters and um, it'll be done for the, the, the intake install. Okay. Okay. How bright is that? Mm, snug. Snug. So pretty much what we're taking off is just this bracket, which um, open up the air box. screws into the frame. This one, two, yeah, see how it's coming loose? Yeah. Very interesting design. Yeah, it is loose, you're done. All right, then we'll do those, and I'm gonna get started on these torques right here. These were hardly even snug. And what size is that again? You're this is a T30. A T30? Okay. What do you need? Someone right here? All right, let's open that uh, air intake. Wow, look at that little guy. Wow. It's so tiny. That thing is so tiny. Well, that's an easy swap. Just lifts right out. So the stock filter has on the bottom left a little plastic ridge, um, which is where it slides into right here. And then if we can show on the DNA, um, has that same little ridge right there to replace the stock filter. There we go. Feeds right in. I think that's all in. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Wow, I felt, like the, I felt like the stock ones have set up like, sit up really high. <laughs> Guess not. Now I gotta feed it the same way on the top. Cool. Okay, so the top and bottom kind of bind the right. filter together. And there's a track. Got it. For okay. both sides of the filter. I guess there's a very flush seal, mm -hmm. so no air can slip around it. That good. makes sense. Yeah, it's good. All right, well, uh, let's put we'll, it back together again. We're going to do a time lapse of um, putting the top back on, and then we'll get to the gas tank. So one thing I recommend is this back brace for the fuel tank. Leave this a little bit loose until you actually get your tank mounted because you're gonna have to put that um, that long bolt through and you don't know um, the distance or clearance that you might need. So leave this part loose to get your tank on. And um, just a reminder, here's your breather hose for the right on the left. Um, black for the right of the fuel pump, brown for the left, and here is your fuel line. So we're going to throw the gas tank back on, these two rivets here, um, and then back here. Alright, so you want to hand me that tank? Yep. So breathers first. So let's do the right breather. Goes on the rear. It's easy. Do the left breather. Go down a little bit. All right, now we have the black fuel pump connector on the right side. Now the brown one. Now the fuel line. There you go. And then it just snaps into place, push it up on the bottom, clamps on. So let's... Um, We're good. Yep. I'm tilt forward first. To get it past that point. Yep, the front's lined up. Okay. Line up the Back. rear. 
Okay, coming down. Cool. Going over these, these rubber grommets. You're good. There we go. Nice. Yeah, so to give it a little force, that's all. So let's slide that long bolt in just to hold it in place. Uh, we'll slide it through and then we'll put the Loctite on and then, um, and then we'll put the nut on. Cool. Here's it. Um, we still want the front to move because it's still not like Yeah, yeah. So, so let's not yeah. turn it all the way down. All right. So a little handy thing to note, there is um, a washer inside this grommet. You can see it right here. Make sure that's in there. You don't want that to fall out. Mm -hmm. It started to come out on the other side. I noticed it, so I'm just doing it again. I also find that it's it's easier if you lift the tank a little bit. To find to the see. threads, yeah. yeah. There we go. And that's also why we left the back uh, brace bar loose. So we can maneuver the tank back and uh, forward and backward. Okay, it's not. Just a little rough section. Okay. So to get the left side of the yeah. gas tank installed, we're actually going to be removing this underplate right here so we can get the bolt in um, straight. And also we disconnected this little fuse box that's right here. Um, right here as well and this wiring harness which just clips in right here but we're going to be taking off this little uh, quick bottom bracket and it's a three millimeter allen episode we got the DNA air filter installed uh, without a hitch without a hitch everything was pretty smooth even though we had to figure out um, you know the ins and outs of uh, taking out the gas tank but everything's hooked up and we're gonna be doing the tune in part three so stay tuned drop a like if you guys like the video drop a comment in the section below I reply to all the comments in my videos and subscribe for episode three where we are going to tune the Trident 660. All right, guys. If you have any questions about uh, the experience with the, the changes with the new air filter, uh, I'll respond as well. Yeah, he's watching the comments too. So, like I said, drop a comment. Either of us will reply. We can chat with you guys. We love doing that. So, stay tuned for the tune. And as always, ride safe. <laughs>